Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem valid perfect square. We're given a positive integer num and we want to write a function which returns true if the num is a perfect square and we want to return false if it's not a perfect square. So what is a perfect square? Well, one squared equals one. So that means one is a perfect square. 2 squared equals 4, so that means 4 is a perfect square. 3 squared equals 9, so that means 9 is a perfect square. Well, what about all the numbers in between these? For example, is 3 a perfect square? Well, if you square root 3, you get something like 1.7 something, I think. And basically, that means it's not a perfect square because it's not a, it's a decimal number, right? It's a fraction, so that means it's not a perfect square. That means three is not a perfect square. Okay, so immediately you can probably at least come up with a brute force solution. So suppose in this example we're given 16, we want to know is 16 a perfect square? Well, we can't just take the square root of that as you can see uh, in the description of the problem at least. So just trying the brute force, well, we can check one squared. Is that equal to 16? No, it's not. Two squared, is that equal to 16? No, it's not. Three squared, is that equal to 16? No, it's not. Four squared, is that equal to 16? Yes, it is. So in this case, we found the solution and we can return true. But suppose we were given a different number. Suppose instead of taking the square root of 16, we're trying to take the square root of 14. So uh, in that case, we're gonna still do the same exact steps. Three squared is equal to nine. That's smaller than 14, right? So we haven't found 14 yet. Now we're gonna say four squared. Is that equal to 14? No, it's 16. But are we now gonna continue because 16 is larger than 14. So any number that we try after this, like five squared, is also gonna be greater than 14. So basically at this point we, we determined that 14 is not a perfect square. We can return false. So this is pretty much the you know brute force solution. So what's going to be the time complexity for this solution? Either we're going to actually find the solution. So for example, 16, we found that it is a perfect square and uh, we did that by trying all the values from one all the way to the square root of n, uh, right? 16 was n in this case. We're gonna stop once we actually get to the real square root in this case, or in the case of 14, we're gonna stop after we go over the square root. In total, the time complexity is just big O of square root of n, because that's how many possible values we're going to have to try. So that's a pretty good solution, you might think. It's pretty decent for a brute force solution. It does pass on leak code, but there actually is a better solution which is a little bit tricky for an easy problem. And it's not even obvious that this solution is better because it turns out that we can apply binary search to this solution and the time complexity of binary search is big O of log n. But is log n actually more efficient than square root of n? It's hard to know off the top of your head, but just imagine that this is something like how the charts look like. You can see that square root of n is much uh, faster, is much larger than log n. It grows much faster. And that's uh, pretty intuitive if you actually take a few example numbers. So if we took the square root of a million, we would get uh, something like a thousand, right? A thousand squared is equal to a million. But if you take the log of a million, log base two that is, which is what the uh, binary search complexity is, this will be very small. It'll be something like 20, I think. And that makes sense, right? Because when you think of 32-bit integers, uh, the maximum value you can store in a 32-bit integer is something like a billion, I think, right? So it makes sense that square root of n grows much faster than log base two of n. So if we can find a binary search solution to this problem, that will be much more efficient than the square root of n solution. And it's pretty straightforward, actually, the binary search solution, at least. We know that the number that we're given is gonna be positive. So the smallest possible solution we could have is one, right? Meaning the, the smallest square root of the number could be one. And the largest square root of that number could also uh, be the number itself, right? In the case of one. So we're gonna do our binary search from one all the way up until n, where n is the input value. And so we're gonna calculate the midway point 
And once we get that midway point, we're going to check, okay, 3 squared, is that equal to 16? Well, it's 9, so it's not equal to 16. So now in our binary search, where what are we going to do? Are we going to search to the left or are we going to search to the right? Well, we need to find a larger number so that we can get to 16 because 9 is smaller than 16. So what we're going to do with our binary search now is say, this is not the solution. And we know for sure everything on the left is also not the solution. We're going to start looking to the right. Of course, if our target was actually, you know, num equals four, for example, then we'd say, okay, three squared equals nine. That's too big. So we're not going to look at three and we're not going to look at any values to the right of three. Now we're going to start doing our binary search on this side. And we're going to keep doing that until we find that either n is a perfect square or it's not a perfect square. And in that case, we would return false. And we would know that it's not a perfect square is basically if we exhausted all the possibilities. We found that this doesn't lead to the value n, and we found that this doesn't lead to the value n, that's when we return false. But in this case, if n equals 4, there is a solution, and that solution is actually 2. So if we found that this is the solution, then we would return true. So this is log n time complexity, and it's much more efficient than square root of n. So now let's code it up. In case you're interested in the square root of n solution, I do have it coded up above. I think there's probably easier ways to write this, but this is what I did, right? We're just going through the brute force from one all the way up until num. In Python, when you do a loop like this, num plus one, we're not actually going to use num plus one. This is just uh, the upper bound. But if we found that i squared is equal to num, then we'd return true. It's a perfect square. But if we ever got to a point that i squared is greater than num, then we know that it's not going to be a perfect square, and then we could return false. But now for the more efficient binary search solution, like I said, our left bound is going to be 1. Our right bound is going to be the input value num itself. Then we're going to do a binary search until we've either found the solution or we've exhausted all the possibilities. So while left is less than or equal to right, then then we're going to compute the midway point. Now in Python, you can uh, do that by you know adding up the values and doing two slashes for integer division. If we do one slash, it's going to be decimal division in Python because Python's a little bit weird. And then it's going to be a very uh, straightforward binary search logic. So we're going to check is mid squared greater than the number or is it possibly less than the target number that we're looking for? So mid squared is less than num. The last case else is if we actually found the solution, right? If it's not greater than it and it's not less than it, then it must be the value num itself. In that case, we can return true. But in the other cases, we have to update our binary search logic. So if mid squared is too large for the number, then we have to look for smaller numbers. How can we do that? By taking our right pointer and setting it equal to mid minus one. We want to look at every value to the left of mid. If it's the opposite case, we're going to do the opposite thing. We want to look for every value larger than mid. So we'd say L is equal to mid plus one. That's pretty much cookie cutter binary search, but we know that if our loop terminates and we did not return true, then we did not find the solution because the solution does not exist. So we have to return false. There, uh, the, that means num is not a perfect square. So now let's run the bottom solution to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. So I really hope that this was helpful. If it was, please like and subscribe. It really supports the channel a lot. Consider checking out my Patreon where you can further support the channel. And hopefully I'll see you pretty soon. Thanks for watching.